around Arnold, the expo, when it comes to Arnold Schwarzenegger, you don't get a bigger name in, in Hollywood probably, um, especially from the fitness industry. How do you get his phone number or how do you connect with him? Because that's just crazy. Look, I, I think Arnold's the most recognisable person in the world yeah. then and now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because in every country – yeah, we've been to in every continent, everywhere we've been, there's crowds and it's, it's crazy. <laughs> Look at that photo. <coughs> what a beast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're walking through an expo. So that's in Melbourne, that one. Yeah. So look, um, I, I, honestly, we go for another hour telling the Arnold stories. But um, when he had finished being governor, he said he wanted to take the Arnold Sports Festival to every continent. Mm. So people think I got lucky or I got a break. No way, man. I strategically planned... You know, plan that if, if my plan came off, good. If it didn't, what the fuck? At least, you know, I'm never going to have any regrets. And this is how I live my life. So when he said that, um, he said he was going to go and do Spain first because in Madrid he'd filmed Conan the Barbarian. Okay. And he said when he was in Spain, he said the next continent we're going to take over is South America. And he chose Brazil. And he went to some people that had an existing expo and moved, moved in with them. So in the meantime, I started an Australian expo called Fit X. I was already doing the Australian Pro Bodybuilding Show. It was always one or two weeks after the Arnold in Columbus because all of his athletes were in shape and I didn't have the same prize, but I figured, fuck, they're in shape, trip to Australia, who wouldn't? So I'd sort of built a good reputation doing that. So I started this little smaller expo called Fit X, but I based it on exactly the model that he had in Columbus, Ohio, Madrid, and now in Rio de Janeiro. So I thought, if I do that right, when he looks at Australia... I'm going to be his only choice, yeah. right? And, and, and I knew he'd worked with Max Markson, so I'm like, Max, you know, if he calls you. And then the head of bodybuilding, Jim Mannion, um, who'd given me my shot and looked after me, I knew Arnold would call him and say, who, who do we use in Australia? And someone else. So sure enough, um, when he's in Brazil, he's doing his, his speech and um, someone said, it might have been a YouTube clip or someone, someone said, you've got to watch this. And he goes, the next continent we're going to take over is Australia. <laughs> we're going to be talking to people there right now. Anyway, I'm fucking sitting there Pretty waiting good. for the phone, <laughs> waiting for the phone to ring, and I can't remember if the phone rang or I got an email. But it, anyway, someone reached out and said, um, "Well, wow. we want you to come to Vegas to meet someone in the bodybuilding world." Um, but it was actually a decoy. I was going there for the Mr. Olympia anyway to have this meeting, and and Bob Lorimer was there, who was the son of Jim Lorimer, who was Arnold's partner, and they sat me next to him at this dinner, and uh, it might have been lunch anyway. After everyone had eaten, they said, oh, can you stay back? And then they kind of cornered me and they said, you know, you've got this Fit X, X, Fit X Expo. What would you think about combining that with an Arnold Classic? And I go, oh, I was trying to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you've got, to, you've got to use a little bit of psychology. Of so I didn't, you know, I didn't want to seem like it was too easy. Like uh, yeah, on the yeah, first date, you know. It was yeah. like, I'm like, ah, let me think about it. I said, because I've got a really good thing going there. And, you know, maybe we do an Arnold separately in another city or this, but I'm trying, I'm biting my fucking lip. <laughs> yeah. Just going, wow. Anyway, then Bob said, well, I'll come out to Australia and check your facilities. And I took him um, to the MCG and took him to the um, uh, Sport and Aquatic Centre. My mates were running all the security at the Grand Prix. Uh, sorry, no, the Australian Open. So we um, got to go and um, hold the cup. and did all this really cool shit because they had contacts everywhere. And, yeah. and uh, you know, had a good drink with him and uh, down on South Bank. And he goes, this is the best city for sport we've ever seen. It's better than Spain, better than Rio. Like all your facilities and the convention centre and... We did all these inspections. Then um, I got an email back from them saying, we need you to come to Columbus, Ohio, to have a meeting with, with the governor, with Arnold, and he'll see if, if uh, he, wants to be your, he, he wants you to be his partner. So off I go. Um, that was March 2014. So I got a new suit made. Right? This is a funny story. This is fucking hilarious. <laughs> very, very Australian of me. Here we go. So we go to this dinner, <clears throat> and I've never... I met Arnold when I was a kid. I, had a, I paid for a VIP photo with him. You get pushed in front of him. How you doing? And you get pushed out another door. <laughs> yeah, and someone yeah, gives you a yeah, Polaroid. Yeah. And you just hope it turns out. A Polaroid. It. <coughs> wow. It was a Polaroid, yeah. yeah. <coughs> so I was in my 20s, you know. And, and I knew that day I'm going to be business partners with this guy one day. He's going to know my fucking name. Like, I was obsessed with it. So um, I go to this, this dinner. And there's six tables set up, one for um, uh, Europe was Spain, one for South America was Brazil, one for China who were trying to get a license, one for South Africa who were trying to get an Arnold license and one for Australia. And then Arnold's home team, the Columbus, Ohio, USA team. And each of us is like a proper thing with tablecloths and knives and forks. And there's 10 places at each table and a little thing, little like flag, Australia. 
So I went on my own. I didn't know. And the others got like fucking government officials and sponsors oh. and publicists and, you know, ready to make <laughs> these yourself. speeches. <laughs> and then Jim Lorimer gets up and he goes, we're going to get each delegate from, one delegate from each country to, to do a speech and tell Arnold why they should be his partner. I'm there on my own, man. I'm sitting at this <laughs> fucking big table feeling like a real dickhead with a fresh suit on. I'm like, you know. Uh, so I'm like, shit, what happens here? So Arnold walks in, you know, and, and you talk about having an aura. And I, I've got a little bit of it. But I always think that you, if, if you've got it and you know it, you know how to light up a room. And I really inherited some stuff from him. He taught me some really good tricks and gave me all my media training. But anyway, any he walks, I'm like, oh, my God, Arnold's just walked in. So he beelines for my table. He goes, what are you doing there? I said, I'm Tony from Australia. We shook hands. He goes, what are you fucking sitting on your own for? Come and join me at my table. I'm like, cool. <laughs> no one else got to do that. So I went and sat with him. And when it was my turn to do the speech, you know, and you know, these other people had government funding, they had council yeah. backing. I got jack shit. The government wouldn't talk to me. The council wouldn't talk to me. You know, um, the Melbourne major events wouldn't talk to me. I just got shunned and pushed aside and doors shut in my face and blah, blah, blah. I got nothing. So I got up and said, I've got nothing. This is my speech. I'm like, um, but I said, I've got a will to work. I said, I've got a pre-existing expo, which can be just like the Arnold Classic with the best sporting facilities in the world. And I said, if, if it's 2015, that's um, one year and one week from now. I said, what I can tell you, I'm going to work every single day, weekends, weeknights. I'm not going to rest. I'm going to give you the best experience, the best expo you've ever seen. I give you my word. I ain't going to stop. And Arnold stood up and started clapping and everyone stood really? up and started clapping and going, fuck, I'm in. I'm in! You know? <laughs> wow. And then it went from there. Wow. So then I went to every Arnold Classic around the Crazy. world for the next seven years. You know, the next one from there was in Rio. I'd never been to Rio. And um, I remember that's how I kind of got close to him because some of the other partners, English wasn't their first language and he couldn't really relate to anyone. So he always said to me, this guy's like my sore brother, you know, he's like yeah. a little me, you know, and I'm like, fuck, that's pretty that's cool. That's so good. So we were at this expo in Brazil. And they had this wristband where they let everybody upstairs into this VIP room to get a photo with Arnold if they had maybe an orange wristband. But the dumb security guys just heard wristbands so they let everyone up. So there's hundreds of people in this room, you know, not much bigger than this. And they said, Arnold's not going to come out and do these pictures unless we get everyone out of here. And Bob Lorimer said to him, I said, what do you want to do? He goes, well, I need your help. I go, I'll clear the fucking room, bro. Give me five minutes. He goes, what are you talking about? I worked in nightclubs yeah. for a long time. <laughs> Did a lot of bodyguard work, a lot of, you know, protection work. I'm like, everybody out. I just put my arms out and started fucking pushing people down these stairs. Let's go. Let's go right now. Come on. Just got the crazy eyes yep, on and yep. just moved them all out and cleared the room. I go, good to go. And they turn around and go, how the fuck? And Arnold comes in and he had his photos with the VIPs, which was only like 50 or 100 people. And they explained to him what had just happened. And he goes, well, when we do the bubble, so this thing where there's a bubble where we have like 40, 50 security around him, we move through the expo, visit all the big sponsors and visit all the sports. So he said, you're going to come in there with me. <laughs> and there's some great pictures with these black and white pictures of him with his arms on my shoulders and I'm leading the, leading the gang. <laughs> you know? And then we did the same thing in Spain and all over the world. And then things just evolved. You know, we somewhere and he goes... Um, you would do this press conference. I need you to go and open it up. You know, it was when Trump was coming up. He yeah. goes, um, I don't want to talk about fucking politics or Donald Trump. And if they do, it's on you. So go <laughs> and warm up the crowd. Tell the journalist to fucking leave it alone. You can do this. So this is where I got my media training. Wow. So I remember there was one in Melbourne, actually. And I came out and it was seven, nine, ten. Sam Newman was there. Um, plus, but all the actual reporters were there. I came out and I said, listen, guys, if you say anything about politics or Donald Trump, he's going to terminate you. I said, this is no fucking joke. I said, I'm going to lose my job. Like, seriously, got any questions about that shit, hit me up. I said, because we're here to talk about the fitness crusade, about getting people off the couch, about changing people's lives. And they bought it. Everyone's like, oh, okay. And then Arnold came in, not one question. He goes, okay. right, you're doing my press conferences from now on. You know? And well. then as an interviewer, I always wanted to interview him. And I got to interview him in Hong Kong, in Sao Paulo, in Australia, of course, in Columbus. I got to MC his... His show, which was my big dream in Columbus, right up until COVID hit in front of you know, five, 10,000 people on TV and everything. And MC'd in Brazil, MC'd in, in Africa. Um, and, and just stuff I couldn't have thought up all mm. because cause we clicked. Yeah. You know? And um, uh, man, I, I, I've got so many memories to this day that I, I just stop and pinch myself mm. and go, you know, just a kid from the bush. But it's not just about having a dream. 
Well, it's also about doing the fucking work in the background that yeah. when you get your shot, you're ready. Because if I hadn't have done that expo and I had have had him call, so well, maybe we want you for to do the Arnold Australia, there would have been 10 people out there, well, there was, with more money, more experience, more contacts, more everything. So I put myself in a position to win. And if you're willing to do that and roll the dice and go, well, fuck it, what's the worst thing that can happen, right? Mm. Right? I don't get the gig, but at least I tried. So that's kind of the very short background story of how that happened and, you know, I just wanted to smoke a cigar with Arnold one day. Man, I've smoked cigars with Arnold in every continent. And I remember once he called and he goes, hey, um, we, we want to do a show in Asia. We end up doing Hong Kong, but he goes, I want you to meet me in Shanghai this week. I'm like, okay, I'll get a ticket and off we go. And, uh, you know, we went to all the huge facilities and we talked about swimming. I remember we went to this pool. They were trying to sell us in to do this multi-sport festival. There was that many thousands of kids diving and swimming. I've never seen more people like this in my life, this facility, dozens of pools and diving boards and people say, oh, they don't really swim. Man, they measure the length of their arms and legs and their lung capacity and pull them out of school and put them into those programs when they're, they're this big. You know, I got to do that with yeah. him, you know. And then just, you know, just crazy shit. It's so inspiring. Yeah. Like that last bit what you said about when you, when you time, just be ready for your moment. Because yeah. that's I, I totally agree with that. And you it's, say yes. Yeah. Like, whatever he'd say something to me, I'd just yeah. go, yep, I'm in. Yep. Like mm. that, come to Shanghai this week. I yep. didn't check with him. It was okay. Yeah. yeah I remember I was, um, we were at the Rose Cafe in Venice Beach. All the partners were there. And his assistant called me. He goes, can you be out the front in 10 minutes? There'll be these black SUVs waiting for you. The, the boss has got a big surprise for you. I go, I'm in. Right? And the other well, what is it? I go, come on, fuck it, just come. So we get to the front, we get into these SUVs, we drive like into the hills behind the Hollywood Hills somewhere. And it's the place where he keeps his tank, right? And he comes raging around the corner. You'll find it on my Instagram. That's a picture I was talking about with the hands oh, on the shoulders oh, yeah. in Brazil where, where I cleared out the room and he goes, righto, you're, you're in charge. <laughs> anyway, so um, he's got this tank, right? It was actually the actual tank that he was in the Austrian army when he escaped to go and do his first bodybuilding show. And he managed to find it, source it get it shipped to America and he keeps it at this movie prop place where they keep all the, the war Props. machines, you know, to make war movies, but it's Arnold's tank. So we're waiting there and I hear this rattle and this fucking all this noise, this motor and gang, this thing comes, he pops up out of the manhole, pulls up and he goes, Tony, get in. And so I got into the other manhole and all the other partners climbed all over it and he takes us bush bashing in his tank. I'm wow. like, that is this insane. is the coolest day of my life, man. <laughs> I think I've seen that footage. Yeah, yeah, I reckon yeah, I'll have. Put it all, it's all on my yeah. Instagram. Tony Doherty Oz, if you want to check out some <laughs> of this shit. Um, you know, I was in his office one day. Um, you know, he said, have you ever, you've, you've seen the gun, right? And he goes, what, this is the Terminator gun. He goes and gets me the shotgun oh, no. that he has on the Harley, you know, um, uh, from the Terminator. And then he goes, and what about the Conan sword? So I got to hold the Conan sword. I mean, just shit. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's insane. You know, honestly, there, there it is. There's the tank. <laughs> Um, Look at his head. Yeah, you know, we've both got a cigar going yeah. on. I'm in the other manhole and we're raging around this, this bush. It's unreal. Uh, you know, and it sounds, it always sounds wanky telling these no, stories. It doesn't. You know, because, no, no, no. Um, people are really go, well, there's pictures. Um, but <laughs> we got to do some really, really yeah. cool shit, you know, and he mentored me and he took me yeah. under his wing. And, and, you know, we were going strong, man, until, until the pandemic hit. Yeah. You know? yeah. And my expo got shut down five days out. I'd been to America, I'd emceed the Arnold Classic there and we'd heard about this virus and they shut the expo down halfway but they let the sports go ahead. Flew back, I think we're going to be okay. Then I got a call five days out and it was Peter King from the convention centre said, we're padlocking it tonight at midnight, bro, it's over. Kidding. Well, shit, I lost 870 grand in one phone call. I'd had my staff on for a year, I'd done all the billboards on the freeways, I'd paid for the ads for Triple M and Fox and all that and they'd done all their ads, they'd, they'd delivered. So yeah. there's no mm. refund on wages and all this. You know, we said, we'll do it next year. It got cancelled again. So it was no more, you know. And all of a sudden, this this unbelievable life I'm living, right? I was away from home seven months of the year, living in the best hotels in the world, you know, eating in the best restaurants, just doing cool shit with the Terminator, you know? <laughs> yeah. Listening to his stories. Living you know, your dream, mate. Man, and yeah. you know, he'd take me on safaris in South Africa and, you know, stuff... I could go on honestly all day about the incredible experiences that we had, and and you know, oh shit. What's man. your relationship like now with Arnold? Well, you know, I haven't seen him. I've seen him once since all that happened, and I was at the Olympia a couple of years ago, and I was in LA just for one day passing through, and 
we didn't get time to drop in. I didn't want to just drop in, you know, without notice. And I got an email from you asshole, you're in Los Angeles, you didn't even come and see me, it's Christmas time, what the... Oh. And uh, I emailed him back and then I was there just in May. You asshole. <laughs> something like that. Not really, yeah. but something like yeah. that. Anyway, we're at this... Um, uh, I was there just in May, just gone. Oh, well, I'm not going to make that mistake again. So I, I called his assistant and he goes, man, he'd love to see you, but he's in Canada now fil- um, filming uh, that net- another Netflix... Um, I think it's the second part of that FUBAR. Anyway, he's, uh, you just missed him. So he just sent a message to say, you know, sorry, couldn't catch up, but next time, please, awesome. you know, drop in and see me. So, you know, I got his secretary's number and I know where his office and his house is. And, yeah. you know, I've got to, um, you know, go to a couple of parties at his house. And, you know, I've got to have a, a glass of wine and a cigar with his best friend ever, Franco Colombo, just before he died. And it was, you know, one of the most special nights of my fucking life, man. You yeah. Know? And just, just stuff like that. And there's stuff that obviously I won't even discuss mm. in a podcast I've done with Arnold that is just unbelievable, man. It's, it's like to, to get to know your idol, but then to travel with them, kind of live their life. And the people I met through him, it, it, it's insane. Mm. 